Hello everybody, my name is Matt Bernhardt and this is a kind of unofficial lightning talk that I was not organized enough to be able to get onto the official schedule that when I mentioned on Twitter it seemed like some people were interested in maybe watching so this is the talk. Uh, this is um, a service called blocks.org that I noticed Mike Bostock has written that uh, pairs with GitHub Gist as a way of enabling users to kind of fiddle with uh, data visualization. So if you've been watching the data visualization space in any reasonable detail, you are probably already aware of D3.js, um, which is a JavaScript-based visualization language written by Mike Bostock and a few others um, that is, in the words of Zo uh, the movie Zoolander, so hot right now. Um, and one of the things that I found interesting as someone who's working as a software developer um, and who occasionally uses D3.js in various projects is that it would be really nice to kind of take some of these examples that you see here on their front page or in their examples page and be able to fiddle with them and you know kind of take them over not necessarily have to build them from scratch or Im or import something into a you know a locally running web server or take on a lot of you know in digital infrastructure i just want to fiddle with a, with an example that i see so that is the idea behind this blocks.org site that um, you'll see in some of these examples so if I pick the example of this force-directed graph, um, and if I, even if I hover over many of the examples in this visual index that is the examples page, you'll see down at the bottom of the screen that a number of them come from this blocks.org website. So the chord diagram is one that I've done this technique with. I've also used this with the force-directed graph, uh, the tree map as well. Um, not all of them come from this way, so if you, um, some of these also come from um, you know his his private GitHub repo, or some of them come from even you know even farther afield. Um, but anytime you see an example on this page that is from blocks.org, the following technique will work. So the way it works is if you go to the go to the page for that visualization, um, you'll see that the, you'll see the visualization itself. You'll see a little bit of text about it. You also see the source code for the, that's running behind that visualization. Um, in this case, the data sets that's being visualized is the interactions between characters in the book Les Mis. Um, so that, that is a fairly large data set, and you can see the structure of the data that's being visualized here as its own file, which is important because some of the examples you'll see are generated using random data, which is, for me, as looking for someone to tinker with, that's a little bit less useful. Um, you'll also see, um, in a second, you'll see another, when we pe peel back the curtains, you'll see another few ex uh, features that become really, really useful. So if you go to the blocks.org uh, website and you go up to the address bar of your browser, you delete blocks.org and you swap in uh, gist.github.com, you'll see where the source code lives. Um, so blocks.org basically sits on top GitHub gists, and you can see that there's a readme file that powers the text you saw below the visualization. You'll see the index.html file that, drive, that builds the visualization. You'll see, the, uh, in this case, the miserable.json file. Um, and you'll even see down at the bottom, um, in some of them, you'll see various comments of, that uh, various GitHub users have used, have left about this visualization. So you might get, to get some useful tips and tricks there. Um, but you know, going back to my, in my intro, um, one of the things that's really powerful to me about this is the ability, if you have a GitHub account, you can fork this gist, um, move it into your profile, and go in and edit that file. Um, so in this example, if I was to go into the index.html file, find, go f see the source code that it was um, being built on. If I wanted to, I could add my own file. So if I had a JSON document that was in a, of a similar structure, I could add it. Um, edit the source code to you know, drop in my data instead of the Les Mis data. Um, in this case, I don't have such a J document ready, but what I can do is I can see that uh, the force function has these two, two, these two methods, uh, charge and link distance. So if I decide I want to fiddle with those and say, let's increase the distance between the nodes and let's make the um, charge value a little bit weaker, I can go in, hit update the gist, um, and because this is now my fork, um, I can go. I can go back up to the URL once I've made these changes. Go back to blocks.org. Um, I have to take out the S because um, GitHub runs over for port 443. Blocks does not. Um, but I can now see this is now this is my tweaked version of that file. I can see. Uh, this looks like you know the the visualization 
looks a little bit different. Um, if I go back to in another tab, um, if I open open the original, I can see how you know this is what those parameters look like. This is what the new parameters look like. So I can start to get a sense for how the what the source code is doing, and I can get that opportunity to just tinker with something. I don't need to build something new. I can work with external data sets, which is a distinction you don't necessarily get with platforms like JS Fiddle or you know th frameworks that uh, like Codebox maybe that enforce only one HTML document, only one JavaScript file, only one CSS file. I can build up slightly more complex but still single shot uh, visualizations here. Um, so that's the power in my mind of uh, blocks.org and its relationship with GitHub gists. Um, there are a couple caveats to this. Um, one thing is that to realize that you are working with a cloud with several cloud providers, one of them is GitHub, which is a charged issue in, in, in some perspectives. So you know understand that if you're using this technique, you are you know you're dealing with GitHub. Um, it does not work on top of on top of Bitbucket or private Git servers. Um, the other one is in terms of that kind of iterative tweaking cycle. I've noticed that the block server doesn't refresh its cache of GitHub instantaneously. Um, there have been times where I've you know made some kind made some kind of tweak to a visualization that wasn't working. Um, one thing that I was looking at earlier this week was uh, a map that I was trying to swap in a new data set for. Um, grabbed zip code data instead of instead of uh, county data and I had to wait a couple minutes before I mean, when I realized that the, the there was a data mismatch um, made a change went back over to blocks why isn't it working why isn't it working I had to go into the code inspector to see um, uh, what the site was actually running and to get a sense for you know why why is this thing not functioning and it, re and it was because I realized that the source code that I was looking at was still the old version. So there are a couple caveats, like I said. Um, you may quickly get into a point where you want to take the code locally and you want to work with it more iteratively or more immediately. But for that use case of, I just want to fiddle with something, this is perhaps a, a way to move forward. So um, you can see on screen my Twitter handle. If you've got any questions about this, um, I would love to hear them. Or if you know of other platforms that are similar, um, I'm always looking for more tools in my tool set, so please suggest them to me. Um, but thank you very much.